Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Ronald. Is it your is this your prayer? I wanna put a smile on your face. So what? I praise it. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Crystal. Hey Rick, hey Tiffany. What's up, Cam? Good morning, Keisha. I'll do it again. Good morning, Sade. How are you, dear? Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Jackie. It's a Here's terrific turn Tuesday. Life, Lord, yeah. oh. Somebody raise that up. Say, "Here's my worship." Here's my worship. Got a worship to give them this morning. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Carlos. Bless you, sir. Hey, Sean. Suzanne, bless you, my dear. Good morning, Charlene. Good morning, Toby. I saw you Sunday. You won't let me down. Good morning, Andre. You won't break my heart. You won't let me fall. So so I give it to you. Hey, Jatisha. Hey, Tasha. Good morning, Brother Reggie. Hey, First Lady Judy. Hey, Sean. Good morning, Kay. Bless you, dear. Good 
morning, Gina. Hey, Nicole. Good morning, Margaret. Hey, Michi. Good morning, my sister. Hey, Candy. Good morning, Pauline. Hey, Lynn. Good morning, Blendra. Hey, Jamila. Good morning, my dear. Good morning, Pastor. Great to meet your wife last night. <laughs> I will, Andre. It's spirit led, brother. I don't have a list. Hey, Minister Dan. Oh, okay. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Jacqueline Jones. Good morning. Maxine, bless you, my dear. Thank you guys for joining me once again. Hey, Crystal. Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are you guys doing? Oh, yeah, she was a delight. Hey, guys. How you guys doing this morning? Welcome to Wake Up With The Word. It is Wednesday. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm sorry. Good Lord. It's Tuesday morning. Hey, I wanted to invite you guys um, to join me tonight. We're in a Bible study lesson called uh, The God Man, uh, The Male Man. What? And here's, here's the, the premise behind the Bible study is that there is a spirit of uh, that is, I, and it's understandable. There is a spirit afoot currently in our society that is marginalizing uh, the need and purpose of the male man, and um, and so I believe that when God placed Adam, the first male man, into the earth, he he placed him here with purpose, um, with power and authority uh, to protect and to the Bible says to dress and to keep. Um, and, and we have fallen so far away from that so much so that currently society, even I read an article recently that science is looking for opera, for ways to eliminate the need for the male man, that everything now has, has marginalized us because of, you know, the recent, um, accusations leveled against many men. Um, sexual predating um, and um, misbehavior, inappropriate behavior and sexual harassment, that um, there is a spirit that has moved the male man outside of his ordained purpose. And thus, the society, both, and when I mean society, I mean both the women and children have somewhat lost their usefulness for the male man. And, and currently, the only thing that we pretty much are called upon to do is to um, impregnate a woman and then her expectation and ultimately the, the, the children expectation has become that there is no expectation that the, that the male man will be here, that he will stay here, that he will uh, raise the, his family, that he would love his, his wife. There, there has lost, we've lost that expectation. And my, my responsibility as a pastor is to show you how God would, had ordained for us men to operate in the, in the earth and to help both us men find our own identity and help women be able to understand what we are called to do in their lives, what we are called to do, men and children. What are, what are, what is our responsibility as men in their lives? And so, um, join me tonight, 7.30 tonight at, at our church, and uh, we're going to talk about what it means to be a male man. All right, all right. So, our, our pursuit this week has to do with the understanding that God has called us as children of God to be peacemakers, that that uh, when there's nothing, when there's war and turmoil, uh, when there's strife, that God has called us to be peacemaker and, and reconcile uh, people not only back to God, but we've given us the ministry of reconciliation uh, to God and to one another, that, that much of the scripture is filled with the responsibility of believers to do what other people have have abdicated, which is uh, the idea of reconciling 
reconciliation or reconciling one to another, even when it's tough, even when it's uh, arduous, when even when it uh, sometimes hurts our feelings, that God has given you and I the commission uh, to be reconciled. And so we want to we want to talk about that this week, how to how to find peace in the middle of all kinds of crazy situations. And how do we bring ourselves in line with the Holy Spirit to become peacemakers? So, so the scripture today is Romans chapter number 12, verse number eight, Romans chapter number 12, verse number eight. If possible, this is what the scripture says, if possible, as far as as it depends upon you, be peaceable peaceable with all men. If if possible, as far as it depends on upon you, be peaceable with all men. Uh, most of you who d don't know me other than being a pastor, prior to becoming a pastor, I had the responsibility starting in college and all the way up until I became a full-time pastor about 10 years ago, that my primary uh, responsibility or primary uh, job had been in the area of customer service that it, starting in 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 um in in college where I worked for FEMA and then on to work for office supplies company then worked for a company that did financial uh, management I was always in the area of customer service and and really what that meant was I was there to handle people's problems. That was my job. My job was to deal with problems that people were having and um, to to solve them. And what I what I came to understand after I became a Christian and gave my life to the Lord, I I found out that Christians more than any other people on the face of the earth have been given the Spirit of God, and one of the attributes of the Spirit of God is the ability to make peace. I don't cook. My wife is a great cook. But what I do better than most is I have the ability to make peace when there is nothing there. When there's no peace there, my responsibility is to make peace. And even as I went up through the ranks and became, I, I, at, at the beginning I answered you know, a hundred calls a day, um, and just handle problem people all day long, people who were upset. And I, and I developed a, a gift that I believe that it was God ordained. And I believe you have it as well. Um, that people would come to you with problems and issues and they would, they would sometimes give me death threats, promise to come to the, to the building and kill me. And by, but, but by the time they got off the phone, they had experienced something that was inside of me, um, that I, I, I uh, conclude that it was the peace of God. And I believe that that's, that's in, in every one of us who named the name of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace has been defined as the state of tranquility or quiet. Such definition could cover many situations in which there is an absence of strife. But even dead people, hear, hear this, even a dead person is at peace. He is at peace. Often to prevent having difficult relationships, many of us, many of us today, even Christians, have, have set out to avoid the path of where there's strife rather than engaging with someone who has hurt us, offended us, or seems challenging for us to love. That, that, the, that the, the script now, even in the body of Christ, is that when there are tough people that come into our path, when there are mean people, hateful people, strifeful people, when there are people who are we find difficult to love, the recipe that has been infused into our, our playbook is to leave them, to walk away from them, to avoid them. And yet the scripture makes it very, very clear that Jesus came, when he came upon this earth, he came directly into uh, places into people's lives who were difficult. The woman at the well, um, uh, he was he was always finding himself in places where people were going to be difficult and that they needed the peace that he had inside of him. Our role model, who was Jesus, however, did the opposite that we do oftentimes. He, he displayed his love, the scripture says, he, he gave his love to the unlovable people like you and me. Romans chapter number five, verse number eight said, he commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, while we were hateful, mean, uh, despicable, 
uh, anti-sociable that the Bible says he engaged us. He, he loved us even when we were unlovable. Everyone wants to have peace, but I believe that in order to have true peace upon the earth, we need to be more than just peaceful. We need to be able to just do more than just walk away from everything that is difficult, every person that is difficult in our lives. That's, we, we claim that, yeah, I just want peace in my life. And so in order to get that peace, we think the, the, the recipe is for us to walk away from everyone who sometimes who are at, at some point makes our life difficult, but that's peaceful. In his sermon, Jesus did not stress to us that we should be peaceful. He said, happy are the peacemakers since they will be called the sons of God. That's Matthew chapter number five, verse number nine. Jesus was speaking to individuals who would later have the opportunity of representing him uh, as sons of God in the earth. And I believe, brothers and sisters, that as we, as we move along into December and move along into the Christmas season, that you and I should take once again the mantle that Jesus gave us, which is to become peacemakers, that, that when there's strife, that, that God can send you and I into the most difficult situations with the most difficult person, but because you and I have something other than uh, coping skills or uh, a recipe for success, that you and I have been given the Holy Spirit that allows us to be able to discern what buttons to push, where what words to say, what prayers to pray, so that we can win hearts and minds of people who right now seem to be hard and difficult. Matthew, uh, Jesus was speaking to individuals who would later have the opportunity to become his representatives. You see, brothers and sisters, peacemakers, or, or what the scriptures often call peaceable, that's the difference between peaceful and peaceable, that, that it is peaceful, can have such hope and gain real peace. Only those who have refused to avoid but learn the ability, the powerful ability to pray for people, to care for people, and to share with people who are ungrateful, selfish, flaky, mean, can enjoy what Jesus calls the peace of Christ for in our lives. For such, the scripture says, were some of us. Romans chapter number, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 11 says that, that you and I are, in, are called upon to engage people's lives who are difficult, f remembering that we used to be that person, and sometimes really still is, um, that we are sometimes difficult ourselves. And when we're difficult, we don't want people uh, to despise us, to throw us to, off to the side, that when we are difficult or when we make the mistakes, we want people to continue to love us. And yet it, it has become the 21st century's uh, mantra from the pulpit, unfortunately, is that when your haters and difficult people, when, when if not people are not uh, what, what is the phrase? When the people are not celebrating you, you need to walk out of their life, whatever like that. That's not Bible. The Bible says that you and I are called upon to engage people who are difficult. But re, re, thinking about the Bible who says, the Bible says, and such were some of you. Such were some of us. The Greek word for peaceable literally means to be peacemakers. And, and I want the assignment in my life, uh, not to be peaceful all by myself. My, my, I believe that a Christian's assignment on this earth is to make peace where there is war, where there is strife, we bring a sense of calm, where there is trouble, we bring joy, that, that, that where there is uh, uh, disagreements, you and I can bring agreement together. That's That, I think, is our badge of honor that oftentimes uh, separates you and I from those who don't know Christ. The Greek word is peaceable. That means to be a peacemaker. There is often a difference between someone who is peaceful, at peace, and being peaceable. But being peaceable in the scripture, scriptural sense, implies actively promoting peace, sometimes making peace where there is previously lacking. 
that, that our jobs, brothers and sisters, is not to look for the most peaceful situation, but to engage peace where there is war, where there is strife, where there is trouble. Uh, they send us in. Uh, uh, when I, Even after I became a director and did not have the responsibility of talking to customers any, any longer, when there was a really, really difficult person on the phone, when there was a person who was like at wit's end, they would they would find me in my office and they would say, George, can you please talk to this person? And I believe it was not my skills. It was, it was not my ability to communicate. It was simply the Holy Spirit being able to make peace where there was none. With that in mind, the, consider the Apostle Paul's counsel to the Roman church. If possible, as far as, as it depends upon you, he says, be peaceable with all men. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 18. Paul was not telling the Romans simply to, to have calm dispositions or only to associate with, that, with people who were easy to love. No, Paul was saying he was encouraging them, the Roman church, to roll up their sleeves and to make peace. But with whom? Who was Paul talking about? With all men is what Paul, Paul says. He says, make peace with all men family members, fellow Christians, even those who don't share our beliefs, even people who are not Christians, we have the ability to make peace. He encouraged the Romans to make peace with others as far as it depended upon them. What does that mean? What that meant was Paul was saying, as long as it doesn't, doesn't compromise your beliefs, as long as making peace doesn't compromise your uh, your biblical stance on things. He says, outside of that, the, our responsibility is to make peace. Rather than unnecessarily antagonizing others, our approach should be uh, every time we wake up in the morning that we will bring peace with us from our homes to our jobs, to our schools, to our communities, to our churches, that, that somehow when you walk into the room, you should be bringing peace with you. Paul wrote, always pursue what is good toward one another and to all others. How can we be peaceable for those who do not share in our value system? For one thing, here's one thing we can do, brothers and sisters. We can avoid displaying the air of superiority. This, 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 this uh, is my pet peeve. That, that we can walk into a situation where we don't have to act as if we are uh, the best thing in the world. That, that we don't have to op operate as if we're superior to everyone else. That the one way we can come into someone's life who is having a difficult time and are displaying behavioral patterns that are um, um, not conducive to joy and peace is that we can operate our lives from, a, from an air of being um, with someone instead of above somebody. Instead of looking down on people and uh, ostracizing people, perhaps we can engage somebody who's having a tough day, who's displaying attitudes of antisocial behavior, that we can, because we have been given a gift from God, maybe we can display that into their lives. Here, here's where I'll leave you today. Um, Titus, Titus uh, chapter number three, verse number two, uh, one and two says, after telling Titus to counsel Christians in Crete about their dealings with human authorities, Paul said to remind them, here's, here's what Paul says, to speak injuriously to no one, not to be belligerent, or to be, but to be reasonable, exhibiting all mildness, mind, mildness toward all men. He says, be peaceable to, with those who do not share your faith. Even uh, our disposition or our personality goes a long way with recommending people to the truth of the gospel. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 33 says. Still, my brothers and sisters, no matter where we go, no matter what we do, no matter who we contact, our responsibility is to be courteous, to treat people with dignity, and with, with all kinds of kindness. Here's what Peter leaves us. Keep your behavior excellent among the unsaved Gentiles. Conduct yourselves honorably with graciousness and integrity so that for whatever reason they may slander you as an evildoer, yet by observing your good deeds, they may instead come to glorify God. So my, my prayer this morning and our, your assignment this morning is that, that there are some people who are hard that are, are, are that you have identified as being difficult, maybe in your house or maybe in, on your job or maybe in your school. 
my, 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 my assignment for you to, today is to write those names down today. And for the rest of the day, what I want you to do is I want you to pray that God gives you a door into their lives so that you can bring them peace, that you may be the agent that they may be able to find peace. It may cost, it may cost you something. It may, it, you may have to engage, but, but the truth of the matter is all we, all I want you to do today is just, I want you to write their names down and I want you to pray. I want you to pray uh, for them. And I want you to pray for you because here's what I believe is going on right now that you and I, um, though the world is in turmoil, and one of the reasons why is because the Christians have wrapped them, have locked themselves behind a door, and when God pushes us out, uh, he expects for us to bring peace uh, to trouble situations. And so today, I want you to write down the names of the people who are the most difficult <laughs> in your life, uh, those you come in contact with on your job, in your school, or even in your family, and write those names down, and let's ask God that God, that you would give us an opportunity uh, to share uh, the peace of God into their lives, that they may be able to see our good works and glorify the Father, which is in heaven. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, you have given us an assignment. Uh, you've given us a, an assignment to uh, bring about peace where there is none. And so, God, I pray in Jesus' name that uh, we would take that assignment on, that today and for the rest of this month, that you, we would open up a door that you would send us, um, as you said, Isaiah, uh, into a troubled situation. Uh, send us, Father, into places and into people's lives that need your peace. Let them be able to see it displayed in our lives, and God... Have us, uh, give us the ability to touch them, uh, to reach out to them, to engage with them and, and display your love into their lives. God, um, you've sent Christ into the world to reconcile men to you. And so God, send us out to reconcile men back to you. God, use us as the ministers of reconciliation. Give us the heart to love you. And by doing so, give us the heart to love those who you love. Be with us and guide us and keep us this day. Make your face to shine upon us. Be gracious to us and give us your amazing peace. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Let's do that assignment, all right? God bless you. I love you. I'll see you at Bible Sunday tonight.